right, so my last video we explored the idea of possibly getting a bonus fighter after the second fighter's pass and what that could possibly look like. Well, that video started to get pretty long, but I actually had a few more ideas I wanted to discuss. And some of the comments you guys left and messages I was sent brought up some good points. So I thought it was worth continuing this discussion about what we could get if a bonus fighter scenario actually happened. If you aren't caught up with the possible Nintendo website leak about this bonus fighter idea, go watch that video as once again, I'm not going to explain that potential leak here. I'm just going to discuss what it could be for fun. I talked in length about this in the last video, so I'm not going to spend a long time repeating myself this time, but here's the warning once again. This idea of a bonus DLC fighter is highly speculative stuff. We could very well only get two more fighters, and that's it. I have seen a lot of people speculating with this bonus fighter in mind, and I'm right here with everyone, I'm speculating about it too, but seriously, let's all keep in mind this missing URL might not actually be for a fighter. It could be for something else, like a stage or stages. At the end of Smash Ultimate, we will have missing spots on the stage select screen after all, so that is a possibility. Or even more likely than a bonus stage, but far less exciting than getting a bonus character, or even a bonus stage, could be another bonus me costume. That's also a very real possibility here. So let's all hype responsibly. Don't set yourself up for massive disappointment here. And yes, I'm also aware speculating about a bonus fighter when we haven't even gotten Challenger Pack 10 or 11 revealed yet is kind of reckless speculation. And honestly, part of the reason I wanted to do this follow-up video to my last one is to fully explore this concept so I don't have to constantly bring it up from here on out. Though I'm sure it'll probably pop up now and again when speculating stuff. Anyway, with all that said, and a fair warning about this being highly speculative speculation, let's jump in and talk about even more possibilities for a bonus fighter situation. Before I get into discussing more characters, there are a couple of interesting concepts about this URL webpage leak I wanted to briefly mention that I didn't talk about last time. Mr. Munch, who has an awesome number munchers icon, over on my Discord wrote me this. Hey Papa, I just thought I'd let you know my opinion on the whole bonus fighter thing. I honestly think, if anything, it is a bonus fighter and not a me. Because if it were a bonus me, you would think they would have put the numbering order after the Breath of the Wild me and not before it like the missing number slot is. That is, if it isn't a mistake or anything. And I agree with this honestly. If they planned on giving us just another bonus me costume, they could have made the Guardian Armor me costume simply the next URL page, and then whatever further bonus me costume was happening as the next URL. But instead there's an odd missing spot, so it honestly feels like a bonus fighter works best here. However, once again, no matter how likely a bonus fighter seems due to this website URL leak thing, it is not guaranteed, so be cautious believing in one. But once again, yes, I do agree, another bonus me costume could have simply been added at the end. Skipping a place for some odd reason does seem more likely it would actually be for, like, a secret bonus Challenger Pack 12 over anything else. That's just my opinion on it anyway, though. Another thing I didn't mention last time, which makes a bonus fighter seem kind of plausible, is the odd way they have decided to count the DLC fighters. They didn't count Piranha Plant as DLC fighter number one. Maybe Plant was supposed to be a base game character. There are actually some reasons to think that might be the case, like the fact Plant has a Palatina's Guidance where the other DLC characters don't. But another reason might be so that the numbered DLC fighters hit a specific final number. The original Super Smash Bros. game had 12 playable fighters, and Smash Ultimate has made a big deal about numbering all of the fighters in order. Sakurai even pointed out the original 12 fighters quite a bit in this game. Right now we end the DLC on Challenger Pack 11, which is a strange number to end on. Plant could have made it 12, but they decided not to count Plant as the first DLC fighter. Maybe they didn't count Plant so that a bonus challenger pack could end the DLC fighters off on the number 12. Sakurai could mention how the amount of DLC we got is the same as the full roster in the original Smash Bros game. That just seems like the sort of cool accomplishment Sakurai might like to point out. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Of course, this would have us believing that the full DLC was decided right from the start, which could be what happened, who knows. 
Another concept I've seen some people talking about is the possibility of another Smash Ballot. Maybe one for a single fighter. This way, the last character we get is truly a fan-chosen character. The missing URL is probably for a page where something can be purchased, so it wouldn't be for the Smash Ballot itself, but maybe sometime soon at, like, E3 or something, Sakurai could announce a Smash Ballot for one final fighter, a standalone Challenger Pack 12 character outside of the second fighter's pass. And that final fighter would take that missing URL spot. Though Sakurai did say he only has two more opportunities for his Sakurai Presents videos. So just adding a surprise free bonus fighter at the end, rather than some kind of announced Smash Ballot standalone DLC fighter, seems more likely to me. But if this sort of thing happened, either a Smash Ballot or simply announcing a final standalone DLC character, then all of those rules that I was discussing last time about how this hypothetical bonus fighter would probably not bring like a stage or music or spirit board would no longer have to apply if this hypothetical fighter wasn't a bonus fighter like some free add-on, but rather just a single standalone DLC character outside of both the first and second fighters pass. In that case, a stage, music, and spirits could probably happen with a character, and it could truly be anybody. It could be like a third party in that case. But I still think using Piranha Plant as our benchmark for what another bonus fighter scenario could actually look like is the most realistic way to gauge what might actually happen if we got another one. So once again, probably a character with no stage, music, or spirit board, and most likely a first party character, if a bonus fighter happened since third-party characters would probably want to bring all that stuff with them, and third-party companies would probably want the character to be sold so that they could make a profit. Again, using Piranha Plant as our benchmark, Plant was free for a limited time for people who bought the game early, and Piranha Plant didn't bring any of that extra stuff, only the fighter themselves. So the most likely scenario for a bonus fighter at the end would be something similar, probably a free bonus fighter for people who did something like buy both the first and second fighter passes, or sold separately if you didn't buy both the first and second pass, and probably a first party Nintendo character. There are some exceptions to this scenario, some of them I talked about in my last video, and there are some more I'll talk about in a bit. But first off, let's discuss more first party character options as that is, in my opinion, the most likely outcome if a bonus fighter happened. So last time I brought up a handful of first party character options, while Luigi seemed the most obvious, but there are many other ones. Many first party characters like Toad or Skull Kid are already in the game in some major form, and same can be said for Waluigi. I brought up Porky last time since he's a first party character with a prominent Smash history, but no strong presence in the game. He doesn't have a spirit or anything. And while Porky, I think, has the strongest Smash history and all that, there are other characters that don't have spirits and things. Characters like Adeline from the Kirby series, though I think Bandana Waddle D would be more likely as a bonus fighter if we got like a Kirby rep as the bonus fighter. Silex is another character with a missing spirit and supposedly is going to have a main role in Metroid Prime 4. So maybe adding Silex at the end to cross promote Metroid Prime 4 could make a lot of sense. Although I think it's just as possible Silex didn't get a spirit in base game simply because they plan on doing a Prime 4 spirit event in the future and are waiting for Silex's newest like render or artwork from that game to add in a spirit for them. Speaking of spirit events, some people have pointed out how Luigi's Mansion 3 did not get a spirit event, while most other big Nintendo games have gotten one. Keep in mind, Three Houses missed a spirit event, and eventually we got Byleth. So some people are thinking King Boo might actually have a chance at being a character in Smash, and that'd be a pretty good bonus fighter. It's another Mario character like Piranha Plant. Also, technically, Petey Piranha sort of became playable as they are part of Piranha Plant's final Smash, and Petey Piranha and King Boo have a history together as Double Dash Mario Kart partners. So, could they be reunited as the two bonus Smash DLC fighters? Maybe. Of course, personally, I think Luigi's Mansion 3 missing a spirit event was simply because some Luigi's Mansion 3 stuff is already in base game Smash Ultimate. The first time we actually saw the new Poltergust with Guigi was actually Simon Belmont's trailer, and Luigi uses the new Poltergust from Luigi's Mansion 3 in Smash Ultimate for his final Smash and his grab attack. So maybe they just felt giving it a spirit event wasn't necessary. Similarly, Yoshi's Crafted World didn't get a spirit event, and we have a Crafted World skin for Yoshi. So these games maybe just didn't get spirit events simply because they already have something repping them in Smash Ultimate, and not because of some future fighter scenario that's going to bring in spirits from those game series. Another possibility for first party characters could be characters that almost made it into Smash in the past. 
There's a lot of strong evidence that the chorus kids from Rhythm Heaven nearly made it into Smash Wii U in 3DS. And Sakurai has mentioned he considered Ayumi Tachibana in the past. But Sakurai decided against including her because her game series wasn't well known outside of Japan. Well, her game series, the Famicom Detective Club games, are now getting a remastered worldwide release for the Switch. So maybe Ayumi could be reconsidered as a potential playable fighter. While these, of course, are both good first party options for characters and fit with this theme we sort of have going with the second Fighters Pass, where many of the characters that almost made the cut for Smash before are now finally getting in Smash's DLC. Sakurai and the team really do seem to be attempting to live up to the phrase, everyone is here. However, the issue with these characters being potential bonus fighters is that while they are first party characters, unlike the other first party characters we discussed, their game series have not yet had a playable fighter in Smash. So they could probably use a stage, music, and spirit board instead of simply being a standalone DLC character like Piranha Plant. So while these are good choices for first party characters for Smash, they might not be the best choices for a bonus fighter in the same vein as Piranha Plant. However, there is another character that Sakurai has mentioned almost becoming a playable fighter for Ultimate specifically, who is from a series with lots of representation already in Smash and likely wouldn't need to bring in a new stage and music tracks and spirits and all that stuff. That character is Decidueye. Sakurai mentioned he made a tough choice between Decidueye and Incineroar for base game, similar to mentioning ARMS and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 reps almost getting in the game. Decidueye is another outlier who just didn't make the cut. We also, of course, have a new Pokemon game due out in 2022, Legends Arceus. And one of the starter Pokemon in that game is Rowlet, the unevolved form of Decidueye. So despite being a generation behind now, the character would still be very current with a future Pokemon game. In a podcast I did with Push Dustin, they made a really good point about what kind of character Smash Ultimate might end off on. Essentially, Push Dustin brought up the fact that the fighters Smash ends on tend to be characters from very current games, such as Incineroar being the final base game character. Sakurai had to go off of concept art to make Incineroar because Pokemon Sun and Moon was still in early developmental stages when the fighter was chosen. The logic behind choosing the final fighter from the most current games possible is so that Smash won't feel dated anytime soon. If the final most recent fighter on the Smash Ultimate roster is from a 2021 or 2022 released game, Smash Ultimate will have a longer shelf life before feeling outdated. I talked about how Breath of the Wild Zelda would fit this concept very well if she was the bonus fighter. And Breath of the Wild 2 didn't release until like the end of this year or maybe even next year. This same logic could apply to Decidueye as well for Legends Arceus as that's scheduled for a 2022 release. Though the character's existence itself is of course much older now. Silex, who I mentioned before, could also fit a similar train of thought, if he is indeed a big part of Metroid Prime 4. If he was the final bonus fighter, he could rep a very current or even future game, Metroid Prime 4. Though again, the actual character Silex was created long before Prime 4, but the same can be said with Breath of the Wild Zelda and Decidueye. If Breath of the Wild Zelda is actually playable in Breath of the Wild 2 though, and she has like a very unique new moveset and everything like that, repping her in Smash could seem like a new character despite being a character technically created for the original Breath of the Wild. Incineroar didn't bring a Sun and Moon stage with them, and since there's so much Pokemon stuff in Smash already, if we got another one, they don't really have to bring anything with them beyond just the character themselves. Decidueye would probably be my guess if another Pokemon character happened, simply because Sakurai said he was considered and we've gotten so many once considered characters during this DLC. But there are plenty of other good Pokemon options if this hypothetical bonus fighter turned out to be a Pokemon character. Probably the biggest thing I failed to mention in my last video that people are speculating about a lot in regards to a potential bonus DLC fighter is a bonus Smash Bros character, as in a character that originated from the Smash series itself. Master Hand has been a part of Super Smash Bros. since the original game, and spoiler alert here, you get to play as Master Hand in World of Light. Maybe the bonus fighter could be Master Hand, since technically the character is already sort of programmed as a fighter you can play as in the game. Maybe a Crazy Hand alt or echo or something could happen too. There are other options though for a potential character that originated from Smash itself. A character like Taboo from Brawl, or even Sandbag as a playable fighter somehow. An interesting option for sure, though I'd personally probably rather get a character from outside of Smash, something like Piranha Plant again, and leave these guys off the roster for Smash itself and just in the game in other ways.
In the last discussion, I mentioned the possibility of the missing URL being for an Echo Fighter, or even an Echo Fighter bundle. I went through some first party character options, but there are plenty more I didn't mention, like Medusa or Black Shadow. Probably too many Echo Fighter options for first party characters for me to list out here. A character I did mention was Octolings, and they could fall into that group of fighters that might be a good character to end off on in order to promote a future, very current Nintendo game since Splatoon 3 is coming out next year. Though like I said last time, getting only one Echo Fighter would be tough to sell as a standalone character, since it would just be an Echo, so the idea of a bundle of like four Echo Fighters for the same price as a single fighter came up. Four Echoes would also completely square off the character select screen, actually both the normal and stacked Echo versions of the character select screen. So four more Echoes at the end would work really well in that regard. Speaking of Echo Fighters being tough to sell alone, I also mentioned last time if instead of getting Echo Fighters for existing Smash characters, what if the final fighter in the second Fighters Pass, whoever Challenger Pack 11 ends up being, ends up having an Echo Fighter of themselves? That could fill the missing URL spot and be a nice little surprise when we expect to get just one more fighter and they show off two instead. Kind of like what happened with Simon and Richter. I threw out a few suggestions last time, like ending the pass with Crash and a Coco Echo, or Lloyd with a Yuri Echo, if somehow they were able to make a moveset between those two characters that was different enough for both of them to work as Echo Fighters of each other. A lot of people contested this idea on the grounds that this extra URL spot is likely a page to buy something, and they would just give us an Echo Fighter and not sell it separately. I guess the concept I'm picturing is that the Echo Fighter would be free for people who either bought both the first and second pass, or just the second pass or something, but if you didn't meet whatever that criteria is, you'd have to either choose between the main fighter or the Echo. Or buy both, but they'd cost the same and have the very similar moveset. I'll admit something like Crash and Coco doesn't make too much sense, since most people would probably just buy Crash. You'd assume Coco would just be free in that scenario. But it's partly why I landed on Lloyd and Yuri as something I wanted to bring up. Lloyd is very popular in the West and has worldwide appeal, whereas Yuri is more popular in Japan and with hardcore Tales of fans. It's kind of similar to Simon and Richter, where Sakurai said, it's hard to say who's really echoing who. I think if we ended with two characters, one the main character, one is the Echo, who are seen as equals, where some people are fans of one more than the other, one isn't clearly the Echo, it would be doable to sell them both separately for the same price, or combine them and give those of us who bought either both passes, or just the second pass, the Echo Fighter for free. Or of course, I guess the Echo Fighter could just be sold, but much cheaper. I don't know. But this concept does open up the door for possible bonus fighters to potentially be third-party characters. There are of course tons and tons of examples I could come up with here. Dante with Nero or Virgil as an Echo, Phoenix with Apollo, Puyo Puyo has lots of characters who could be Echoes of Arl, Tails and Knuckles, or even Shadow and Metal Sonic maybe, would be great ways to beef up the poorly represented Sonic series by adding two characters at once at the end. If the movesets between the fighter and the Echo were different enough in the case of something like Tails and Knuckles. Speaking of the Sonic series, something else I didn't discuss last video that could potentially make a bonus fighter be a third party character is if we got a third party character from a series that already has representation in Smash. This would get around the issue of needing to bring in a stage and music and spirit board. Though the issue of selling the character so that the parent company gets a cut of the profit might still be a problem. If once again this hypothetical bonus fighter was free for people who bought like the first and second pass or something, again similar to Piranha Plant. Piranha Plant should probably be our benchmark for what a bonus fighter could look like after all, and thus likely a first party character. But still, it's fun to speculate, so let's talk about some third party options for characters that already have representation in Smash. We got Sephiroth as DLC, so getting original characters as DLC from third party series already in the game is possible. Dr. Eggman is one of the most iconic gaming characters out there, definitely among the absolute top most iconic gaming villains, and as a Sonic character, wouldn't need to bring in a stage and spirits and all that stuff. Do I think he'd actually end up being the bonus fighter? I don't know, but I'd certainly love to see Robotnik as a playable fighter in Smash somehow. Chun-Li is another very iconic gaming character, maybe the most iconic female gaming character, and Street Fighter already has plenty of stuff in Smash, so she could theoretically show up without a stage or anything like that and still work. We also did have that 5chan Japanese Chun-Li leak, where a lot of what was talked about seemed to have come true, and it said Chun-Li was considered, but they instead went with Ken. 
If this leak is true, they probably picked Ken because he makes an easy Echo Fighter of Ryu, whereas Chun-Li would have to be a totally unique moveset from the ground up character. Of course, even if this 5chan post was completely true, Chun-Li, like what we know happened with Decidueye and Incineroar, may have simply been passed over in favor of Ken, and that might be the end of the road for Chun-Li. That 5chan leak also mentions the Tales of series, specifically Lloyd and Yuri, being considered according to this post. So, if this one were to be true, even if Chun-Li simply didn't happen and they instead went with Ken, it's possible the idea of both Lloyd and Yuri somehow happening could be in play, either as Echo Fighters or otherwise. Maybe they're just two characters from the same series. That could solve the bonus fighter riddle, but that's getting in the realm of speculation on top of speculation. We're taking a maybe real, maybe fake Japanese 5chan potential leak and combining it with the missing URL website thing, so there's a lot of speculation there to think that we're going to end with like Lloyd and then the bonus would be Yuri or something. Finally, as far as third-party characters go, one very out-there concept, but something that would be so awesome I just have to mention it, was sent to me by Ben the Demon on Discord. They said, I think you missed a key possibility for the rumored bonus fighter. Two characters that are related enough to be in a trailer together, but not enough to sell together as one pass. Like if it were Crash and Coco, I feel like Coco would just come with Crash. It makes little sense to sell her separately. But if it were Crash and Spyro, it could be one trailer for both revealing Spyro as the secret Fighter Pass 12. That is honestly such a cool idea to me. Every time Crash or Spyro get brought up in speculation discussions, they seem to invoke talking about the other one. People just love both of these characters so much, and they both represent that early PlayStation platforming gaming era so well. It's often hard to accept if one got into Smash, we wouldn't get the other one. But what a way to end Smash Ultimate if the big surprise was we did get both of them. Of course, just getting one of these characters in Smash would be an absolute miracle, so I'm not at all expecting this scenario, but I'm not gonna lie, it would be amazing. Some dual trailer where they both got revealed together and there's simply a surprise extra fight Fighter, complete with music, a stage, and spirit board. Sakurai mentions how he just couldn't decide between the two characters, so we're getting both of them. Crash with a surprise Spyro added on would possibly be the best ending to Smash Ultimate I can potentially imagine happening. I do have to say on the subject of Crash though, we learned today that Toys for Bob, the developers of Crash 4, have been hit with heavy layoffs, and the team has been relegated to supporting Call of Duty Warzone. This has some people questioning the future for Crash Bandicoot, and of course Crash's chances for Super Smash Bros. Though it's worth bringing up two points in light of this news. Number one, if Crash was getting in Smash, the negotiations happened probably well before Crash 4 even released. So his chances for Smash remain the same despite this Toys for Bob situation. If he doesn't happen, then he was just never going to happen this time around. And two, while I've seen some people make the argument that Activision probably wouldn't give up on Crash this much until after the Smash reveal, if Crash was happening for Smash, this might not actually have anything to do with the Crash IP being given up on. Of course, Toys for Bob was just working on Crash. However, maybe Toys for Bob is just simply helping with Call of Duty, and they could return to Crash later. Or these layoffs might be COVID related. Lots of companies had to make layoffs because of COVID. And the change to Call of Duty might be because it's all hands on deck to churn out the yearly Call of Duty game, even when everything else in the world is reasonably behind schedule this year. So the Crash series could still have a future, even if it ends up in some other division's hands or something. Basically, this could all really be more indicative of what's going on with Toys for Bob, and not necessarily what's going on with the Crash Bandicoot IP in any way. That stuff aside, and back to speculating about a bonus fighter, there are a few other character duos I could see doing this idea, where they are from separate game series, but have such a strong connection, you could justify adding them both in at the same time, possibly in a dual trailer. The only other one I could come up with, though it doesn't work as well as Crash and Spyro having a trailer together, would be Doom Guy and Master Chief. Microsoft recently bought Bethesda, so they do own the Doom series now. And we have both Microsoft and Bethesda content in Smash already. Getting both of these Space Marine first-person shooter characters, but from separate series, at the end would of course be awesome. Again, if we got both Doom Guy and Master Chief, they'd probably have to literally present this as a surprise DLC character, a character that comes with all the trimmings, a stage, music, and spirits, and have this bonus fighter revealed as a full-fledged character, not necessarily a bonus, basically a just surprise character. 
cool concept, definitely a likely concept, sadly probably not, but hey, we can dream. All right, so let's come back down to Earth here after all that bonus fighter speculation and talk about a few other things that are going on. I assume the next Smash reveal will probably be at E3, so I'm thinking Challenger Pack 10, our next fighter, will be shown to us at E3. But there are some theories out there that the next fighter might get revealed earlier than E3. We had a very short waiting period between Steve and Sephiroth and Pyra and Mithra. We sort of had rapid fire character reveals happening for a few months there. Ryu Hayabusa has been speculated a ton throughout all of this DLC, and he has a new game due out on June 10th, only a few days before E3 happens. Maybe Ryu could be revealed prior to E3, and then the Sakurai Presents for the character could happen at E3. There's something weird going on with the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection in the prior month of May. Over on Twitter, Miami Advantage wrote me, Just speculation, a bit weird that the pre-order for the Switch version of Ninja Gaiden Master Collection will be available in May, while all other platforms are already available. So for some odd reason, the Switch version of the Ninja Gaiden Master Collection isn't going to have pre-orders up until May, whereas all these other platforms have it available right now. Why might that be? Well, kind of an out there theory, but maybe Hayabusa will get revealed for Smash in May, and they want to announce the pre-orders for the Master Collection coinciding with that character reveal. The biggest issue here, in my opinion, is E3. I really feel a character reveal will happen there. It's possible they could reveal Hayabusa and simply do the Sakurai Presents at E3, like I said, but that's just not as hype as actually revealing a fighter at E3. Of course, maybe both could happen, where Hayabusa is Challenger Pack 10, revealed in May, possibly released before E3 even, and then Challenger Pack 11 is revealed at E3, and then releasing sometime later, like in the summer. If that happened, though, it would certainly be rapid-fire Smash character reveals, in a very short time span. Possible, but I don't know if that would actually happen. There has been a theory going around for a while now that I kept meaning to discuss, but never got around to it. But now that May is approaching us, I should probably go over it. That theory is calendar theory. I first saw this theory from a YouTuber called The Grumpy Gibbon, and I'll link to their YouTube video about the calendar theory in the description below. What The Grumpy Gibbon noticed was that every Smash Fighter has been released in a different month. When this theory was made, we had three fighters left in the second Fighters Pass, and we also had three months left to fill up with fighters, March, May, and August. Well, lo and behold, Pyra and Mithra did release in March, March 4th. So that leaves May next month and August for the final characters to get released, and then every DLC fighter will have been released in a separate month of the year. Sort of an arbitrary thing to shoot for, in my opinion, but it has been working out so far. However, that scenario I just laid out, the one with Hayabusa maybe getting revealed in May and then released possibly the same month as well, and then the final fighter, Challenger Pack 11, revealed at E3, could actually then get released in August, and potentially all this calendar theory stuff could come true. But there are definitely a few issues with calendar theory. First off, technically Piranha Plant actually released in January and not February. So Plant actually overlaps with Byleth, and February remains a month that didn't get a fighter released. However, Piranha Plant was supposed to release in February initially, but was finished early and released to us on January 29th. You could argue that they planned it on purpose to have each fighter get released in a different month, so plant releasing early wouldn't actually change the marketing team's initial plan. But if you think the marketing team always wanted to release each fighter in a different month, then you also have to remember that we did have a pandemic last year, and everything likely got shuffled around a bit. Min Min and Steve might not have been released on schedule, with whatever initially the marketing team's schedule for releases was. And to believe there was ever a full schedule for every month, all 12 months to get a separate fighter, means that Pass 1 and Pass 2 had to have always been a thing that was going to happen. And we were told Pass 2 wasn't decided until sometime into Pass 1. While it is possible they're being honest with us and Pass 2 was decided at some point during Pass 1, I honestly sort of subscribe to a conspiracy theory that they may have always been planning the Pass 2, or at least hoping to do Pass 2. Cloud not bringing in music and spirits and stuff from Final Fantasy VII certainly makes it seem like Sephiroth was planned from the start. And Steve being in negotiations for five years means, well, 
Yeah, past two was probably always a thing. Anyway, once again, the biggest issue with calendar theory, in my opinion, is E3. I just think there will definitely be a reveal there, and if we got a reveal and release in May, and E3 in mid-June, it just feels like way too quick to reveal and release characters. Possible? Sure. Maybe they'll speed things up at the end here, and we will get a character next month, and then another one revealed in June. But I personally think it's more likely we'll just skip May, and our next fighter, Challenger Pack 10, will be the E3 reveal, with one more remaining afterwards. Also worth mentioning, there is a slim chance that Challenger Pack 10 and 11 could both get revealed at E3, but that doesn't really have anything to do with calendar theory. One final thing worth mentioning before I end this video, Bear UNLV on Twitter wrote, how is no one talking about the Super Smash Bros. Melee Final Destination picture frame Easter egg in the new Among Us map? That picture is kind of sus, and Sakurai has actually mentioned Among Us before, so maybe something from that game could make its way into Super Smash Bros. A me costume would actually be pretty cool. Alright, well that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Once again, a bonus fighter is highly speculative, so don't set yourself up for disappointment, but there are some really cool options out there. If you guys have any thoughts or comments about any of the stuff I talked about in this video, leave them below. I'm gonna go play new Pokemon Snap. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Geno's a Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord.